Right then, it's time for actually a pretty damn serious topic, one that's going to get me and Matt literally murdered yep. by a whole bunch of Twitch streamers, Twitch themselves, and maybe the industry at large. So, let's do it. It's going to be very fun. Nice knowing you, everyone. Yep, absolutely. Now, the disclaimer, we are not neuroscientists. We are not psychologists or anything like mm -hmm. that. We are just putting things together that we are seeing going on out there. And, uh, right, I'm, I've, I've chosen... We weren't initially going to start this off with Twitch as the lead, but I feel like it's what people might actually see and feel quite a lot. And yeah. it does tie into like the kind of almost like just dopamine burnout. Uh, don't want to see who signs you in that one, of course. Yes. But, you know, people just keep on getting the hit, chasing the hit. And uh, how there's a lot of overlap between problem gambling and video games, which is kind of basically shown by a massive quantity of the world's largest streamers essentially being gambling addicts. Yeah. Maybe even literally being gambling addicts. Yeah, or as they might say, to make it sound a little bit nicer, gamba addicts. Some gamba content. Yeah. Yes, because, <laughs> you know, as you know, language does uh, inform how we think, how we talk. Uh, I think uh, some fella wrote a book about that a while ago. Maybe. And, uh, you yeah, know, I just changed the word. It's not gambling, it's gamba, apparently. Mm -hmm. Man, this is so scummy. Okay. Um, I mean, there's there's lots of, I mean, take Rich Campbell and OTK. Yeah. You know, the, the OTK guys are, you know, taking the piss out of him all the time for this. Uh, Trainwrecks, XQC, Ludwig, you talked about, um, you know, he pretty much admitted like he had a gambling problem before he, uh, you know, before he like really popped off on like Twitch and YouTube. Um, but okay, so why are they all gamblers? Yeah, that's, that's exactly the things like what is obviously correlation is not causation, right? But you look and go, why are, all, why are some of the top people on Twitch kind of all gamblers? And why do they play, obviously they're the people who play like games all day long, or maybe obviously just chatting content and stuff, but my theory is it is just generally the case of, I mean, you see it with rich people as well. You see it with just the general extremity of, oh, maybe pleasure is not the right term, but dopamine, the extreme excitement, the extreme rush of enjoying something. And that just seems to lead to gambling a lot of the case. And I think, as far as I'm concerned, I actually think it might just be to do with the video game connection of you play video games all day long. Maybe that's your content. You're not going to enjoy video games, right? You're going to need to get excitement from something else because you're just drip feeding yourself with video games all day long. So, where do you go? The same tactics are using gambling in casinos. Yep. That's where a lot of mobile monetization in games and game design gets like their ideas from. It's from how Las Vegas runs stuff. And that's a thing of just, it's basically just the extreme version of playing video games. And maybe that's why they all kind of turn to it in a sense. Yeah. And then what's going to happen then is we, we have to kind of bring this into what's going on on Twitch, yeah. like with steak, which I had no oh, idea Jesus about. Christ. I didn't even know, I didn't even know the Twitch had a section called slots. Mm -hmm. It's insane to me. Twitch, your video games website. Why are you Over. basically? Why are you basically a gambling and softcore porn website? What are you fucking doing? <laughs> right? Like, I mean, it's continually. It's, well, that's how do thing. people have any respect for Twitch? Then you even look at the weird Asmongold ban situation that happened earlier, and you just kind of realize they seem to genuinely just be incompetent. Yeah, they they definitely are. But the thing is, if you get rid of you know what you say the softcore porn, you get rid of the gambling viewers go away. Because especially across a couple of streamers, and it might just be because they're, they're entertaining when they're gambling, but they have substantially higher like views when they're gambling anything else. Was it Rushdain, uh, Aiden Ross, and Trainwrecks? Specifically, Trainwrecks gets a... got just continually slid up the Twitch like ranking overall from playing slots all the time. Just consistent and consistent improvement. Getting like 30,000 average views. Yeah, at one point up to like six, six or seventy thousand average views from gambling. Now you don't, you don't want to take all that away, sorts of bullshit has happened in and around this area in the past. As an yeah. example, the rigged loot boxes in CS:GO gambling websites, right, where like streamers and YouTubers were given better than normal odds um, in some of the CS:GO gambling, which obviously you know that's just a marketing tool for those sites. That's then used to an audience that doesn't really understand that what they're watching is rigged yeah. or is maybe being played with house money, Ooh, you know, yes. issues like this, right? Um, and that leads to a deeply immoral situation where, you know, you're exposing a lot of people to gambling. You're giving people like the initial, you know, free hit by watching along and you're almost encouraging people to gamble more. And it's like, that's a pretty tenuous moral position to, to be in. And now what happens is stake comes into the scene. Stake are a crypto casino 
They're all over Twitch. Really um, crypto just kind of lets them dodge a lot of customer verification stuff. Um, now, this yeah. is kind of like different uh, based on location. Allegedly, they've made some changes. I know in the UK, you mm. cannot crypto gamble on stake. So you would need to use a VPN, um, mm. which is not really a problem for people to do these days. <laughs> not at all. Um, I mean, apparently, right, according to Moist Critical, you need to be verified to withdraw, but uh, we couldn't see the stipulation yeah, on your so, site. But yeah, Pe people generally say that, right? They say you don't need to be verified because all you need is a crypto wallet to play, but then you need actual identifi identifi identity verification to get your money out, which sounds extremely scummy, and it sounds illegal, but that's the point of crypto. It's not been legalized yet, or it's not you know things things it's not that regulated. You, yeah so things that you can do that place. haven't been attacked by the law yet. So just free form to do whatever you want. Yeah, which in many ways is the strength of crypto, yep. right? Because people do want a deregulated, uh, decentralized uh, you know currency, and I think we can all understand yep. why that is a desirable thing. Wonderful principle. Um, but it can, you know can be misused, can get a little bit funky. Now stake are big. Yep. I mean sponsorships with the Everton Football Club in the UK. They are a partner with the UFC, with Watford FC, and then other things. So uh, millions a month in sponsorships. Uh, Aiden Ross actually leaked his crypto wallet address, whoops, and uh, was being paid just under a million in Ethereum a month by stake. Uh, last yeah. year, he was getting two million a month with another gambling sponsor. Go to XQC, a gambling partnership with stake that apparently has resulted in $119 million of viewer money going to their site a site via his affiliate link. Yes. Now, in gambling, the house always wins. Yeah. Simple as that. So it's like by promoting this, you know, the gamblers would say, this form of gaming. I find that tenuous at best because it's just a fancy layer of bing, bing, wahoo on top of a mathematical calculation that is always going to return 97 points. 4% of the money that you put in, meaning you're always going to lose. But then it falls to the reason why even if people know card counting theory, if they don't have the discipline, they're still going to fuck up. Because, yeah, it's 97% say return back to you when you run this experiment over a very long time. So if you are betting like 0.5% or 1% of your float, yeah, you'll get like 97% back. But if people are betting 5% of their float per bet, 10% of their float, then their ability to risk all of or to lose all of the money they put in massively increases, meaning that even though the rate of return to the gambler is, you know, 97 and a half percent on average of what they put in, that is not given back to the person evenly, <laughs> meaning you go bust. The casino has got all your money. Yep. Uh, and this is the sort of thing that people just are not, they're not capable of thinking of that well. Yeah. And then they see the streamers that they, they watch using these, you know, massive, massive amounts of money being bet, getting a really big jackpot, and they want that big jackpot too. So maybe that is going to promote them. You know, you could say that the higher percentage you are betting per bet, higher percentage of your overall float, then, you know, like the less kind of responsible you are as a gambler, the less clued in or, you know, wise you are as a gambler. And everything in this gambling industry is trying to make you less wise with how you actually proceed to use the float, the amount of money that you have put in. Yeah, because it's not even about, you know, the probability. Because obviously back in the way the CSGO loot boxes were rigged, so people had higher chances, that inflated what people thought the, the chance of actually getting a payback was. But that's not even the point. It's because uh, we talked about this in a recent video, but the avail availability bias in a sense where if you see something happening, you're more likely to think that actually will happen. Yeah. So if you see, and this isn't just about watching a streamer gamble for eight, 12, eight hours or <laughs> as Trainwreck did for 38 hours. Uh, that's completely normal. But um, it's, you see the clips, right? It's clips. You'll see the clip. Someone will share you a clip. You go to the top uh, viewed clips on slots. And I think the one I looked at was Rushdain, uh 242,000 views. Winning sixteen million dollars of Bitcoin on stake, and there's a couple of train wrecks running a couple mil at a time from different stake games, and just because you see that happen, that's advertising. Obviously, you, the rational self, you'll go, okay, well, no, I know that that is a very small chance of happening, but there is a little excited monkey in your head going, go, go, make the big. We see the big money, make the big money. Let's go, let's go, yeah. and that's that is going to be there. In the same way you see a really 
I don't know, like a really tasty burger advert and you know, well, I'm going to go to McDonald's and that's not going to look like that. But it works on you anyway. Because that's what that's what advertising does and that's what this stuff does. It uses, it uses things that you're not aware of to get under your skin and kind of incentivize you to do things. Not to force you, but to incentivize things. And that's a case where all of these streamers are just... I mean, that's why they've been paid, right? That's why they've been paid millions. That's why they've been giving the affiliate codes. Because you don't, you know, you don't give someone a mil a week without getting over a mil a week in return. It's got to be RI yeah, positive. That's how a business works. And the owner of Stake recently bought a 36 mil... Uh, a 36 mil house in Australia. Yeah. Cash only. Just just straight up went, oh, there you go. They also own uh, penthouse offices in a city in Australia, I think. And a couple of other things. And you're like, well, where's that money coming from? That's coming from the people that, execute, that are watching XQC Gamble. It's, it's coming likely from, you know, young adults, maybe even like late teens. Twitch viewers. On who, like Twitch viewers, yeah. Yeah, which obviously, you know, you can put 18 plus in front of a stream if you want to. You can have a... Oh, this is intended for mature audiences. Do you want to click? Do you want to continue watching? That's not a safeguard. Even disclosures aren't a safeguard. Even going, oh, because I think I think it was Trainwreck has a little thing that anytime he wins, he plays a video, and it's just him going, "Don't gamble. This is not likely to happen. This won't happen." But that's provably not actually doesn't actually stop anyone. And he, I mean, look at cigarette packets in the UK. They're covered in the most disgusting imagery of what happens when you smoke. People still smoke. And that's the thing, it's, like it's, it's all kind of performative in a way. Sure, it might have some effect, but it's mostly performative. Yeah, and uh, I mean, even like XQC has admitted to losing almost $2 million in a single month with his gambling off, uh, off stream. He says, I'm just easily addicted, so I just shouldn't gamble. I still do it. Is that good? No, it's terrible. That's an illness. I'm ill. I'm ill. But you know what? I can afford to be ill. I'm lucky. And a yeah. lot of people say, okay, your viewers can't. Exactly. And are those disclaimers actually an effective thing? Is this whole thing just a sorted enterprise that we should not be anywhere near involved with on platforms like Twitch? Uh, Drake seemingly mm -hmm. did an undisclosed sponsorship with uh, with Stake. Seemingly. I'm not super sure yeah. that's the case, but it seemed that way. Um, handed, handing out a million worth of Bitcoin while losing 20 million himself. Mm -hmm. uh, Shan Puri of My First Million was intrigued and apparently found that it's all uh, house money. Yeah. So, so apparently for, yeah. this is a celebrity betting with the house's funds. Yeah, so as to whether that's literally 100% confirmed true, I don't know. I don't want to put the onus on Shan who said that because they, they said they apparently found. Yeah. So it's a case of I'm not sure if they have 100% proof, but Drake's worth 200 mil or so at last estimate. The chances he lost 20 mil on stream and didn't really care. Very slim, I think. Very slim. Yeah, Um. here's a comment on, uh, on their video page. Yeah. Uh, this is the video page from... Yeah, this was a this was a video of my first million talking about yeah. the these streams, and that's where I found the information about the owner buying a thirty six mil house because the owner was completely anonymous. No one knew who they were of course. until someone saw a I think it was like a twenty one or twenty three year old bought a thirty six million dollar house in Australia, cash only, and someone went, "That's a bit suspicious." <laughs> Let's look. Oh, they're the CEO of Easy Easy Go, I think they were called. Oh, what do they do? Oh, they're a game developer. What do they do? Oh, they develop games for Stake.com. But we can't find out who owns Stake.com. Hmm. I wonder. I wonder. Yeah. But yeah, this, this, this was a comment on that video from yeah. someone. The way Stake works is the biggest streamers get a million a month, and then they get 30% of the theoretical loss of all affiliate customers for life. So per, a person with Drake's popularity, 200 million Insta followers, if he converts a small percentage, he could be making 10 million plus a month. Their site, though, actually says that it's 10% of the house edge. Yeah. Uh, now, Wired found that 64 of the top 1,000 streamers were streaming crypto slots. As we covered earlier, Trainwreck saw a major improvement in his uh, Twitch success through gambling, getting an average of 31,000 viewers um, in the slots category. Yeah, similar with uh, Rothstein as well. Uh, Ludwig mm. admitted in a YouTube ch a video to being a gambling addict before he found success in YouTube. Um, yep. And then when talking to uh, Dr. K of Healthy Gamer, uh, critical nailed it, just saying, it's really lucrative to be immoral. Yep, and that's the thing where this whole thing on Twitch, because obviously I see a lot <clears> of <throat> people saying, you, the streamers didn't sign up to be role models. Yeah. XQC very much was, went in the whole, whole big Discord message about that. You know, I'm not, I'm not intended to be a role model. I'm just someone being entertaining. If you want a role model, go talk to your parents, go talk to your peers. That's not my responsibility. 
and to a degree that you can kind of argue back and forth ultimately i think the onus should realistically lie with twitch because they're the platform they're the one who's kind of enabling all of this and they're the one who's getting a lot of the benefit from it ultimately and it's a case of if you don't want to control the individual then you have to control the platform yeah and the any way you look at it the only way twitch aren't banning the only reason twitch aren't banning this is because it's probably very lucrative for them it's probably extremely good for viewership it's probably extremely good i mean i, I don't imagine they would ever touch anything mistake themselves personally but if their streamers are making a lot of money then that's good for them because then you know if a streamer is making a mill a month off stake that'll be a mill a month they won't be asking off twitch mm. or they'll go oh twitch want more of a cut of my subs that's fine my months my money comes from sponsorships anyway so as much as i think there is a whole do as i say not as i do thing that streamers are currently engaging with across the whole thing of oh yeah i'm doing this but it's fine for me don't do it chat that's just that's what that's bad parenting ultimately as to whether they deserve the responsibility of being parents no but it's kind of a realism thing to it it's very hateful but ultimately twitch should absolutely ban this because it is complete nutter bullshit yeah it is exploitative bullshit targeting vulnerable people young adults even children sometimes it's bad yeah and of course Ooh. Video games and gambling can be triggering similar yep. neurochemicals. This is the, why it's so dangerous. Yeah, ESRB and App Store for uh, the ratings for Immortal don't mention any of the monetization as a warning to people with a gambling issue. Yeah. There's the whole thing, you know, are these things gambling? And a lot of people would say, well, look, sure, you can't cash out, but it is gambling because it is uh, preying on all the same stuff in your brain. Same neurochemicals. And that same. is ultimately what is, you know, getting you to just put money, money, you know, in and in. Hmm. Now, for the hyper TLD arch, I think is the way to do this. Yeah. Uh, you've got the brain chemical dopamine that is typically linked with, uh, like, pleasure and motivation, mm -hmm. um, right? Um, evolutionary, it's intended to motivate us to do things that are for a short-term good. It's while, uh, you know, it's a large part of why you actually feel good when you're doing stuff that is good. It uh, is pretty strong at overpowering negative feelings mm -hmm. as well, which is why people turn to these positive things to counter anxiety or, you know, other um, sort of low moods. Hmm. And almost everything we do that we want to do or that we like doing, that releases some dopamine. Mm -hmm. Now that could mean smelling some fresh bread, uh, eating sugar, eating fat, playing video games. Uh, for some people, um, that ends up being, let's just say, some not safe for work uh, hmm. uh, materials. Think about the struggles that Terry Crews had yeah. uh, younger in his life. For other people, uh, it's stimulants. It's gambling. It's just buying loads of shit that people yeah. can't afford. Yeah. Scrolling Twitter and Reddit, always just pulling the slot machine on Twitter to see the newest set of, you know, uh, algorithms shown to you tweets. Or just mindlessly watching loads of YouTube videos. You're not even enjoying them. Five hours later, you won't even remember them, but you're just stuck there in a stupor. For yeah. some people, that stupor is just pull the lever. Cha-ching, yep. Yeah. Uh, now, there's a biological process called homeostasis. The brain tries to chemically normalize things. Basically, it's kind of like a tolerance thing. So if your mm -hmm. dopamine receptors are just kind of like firing all day, all day, all day, then what can happen is you can have some down regulation. Uh, this apparently mm -hmm. also happens when people are sleep deprived. And yep. I think you can actually know what that feels like if you think about how you feel when you are sleep deprived yep absolutely it's just the case of things are supposed to be what we consider kind of fun in a way yeah so much of it boils down to dopamine there's so many other factors right because we are not just products of our simple neurochemistry there are so many complicated things going on in the brain that like obviously there's a whole load of social reasons for gambling because it's not just dopamine obviously people want to win money People want to, you know, even just people want to hang out physically. People like the parasocial relationships of gambling streams because they get to, like, siphon off someone else's excitement. And that's like a little social connection. All of those different things all kind of... It's all the same fundamental thing at the, at the deep core. It's not everything. Yeah. But it's the same fundamental thing. And I think a good example is, like, I think it's uh, any stimulant drug, let's say. The reason those feel great is because it just unleashes a wave of it. And that's why you'll see people take a load of coke and gamble. Because that is just a massive, consistent dopamine high. As opposed to the much less, the much smaller hit you'll get from talking to a friend over coffee for half an hour. And that's a thing where if you're used to these massive high pleasure rushes of all these things, everything else feels worse by comparison. And then that happens when you get used to playing video games. And they're not quite as fun anymore. Because all of the dopamine is just that you're, you're at that level. Your brain goes, okay, fucking chill. Don't need to be happy all day long. And then you're like, well, how do I turn that, how do I turn that back up again? 
have to turn to something stronger? Yeah, exactly. So some stakes, like with gambling, yep. maybe for some people it could be a play to earn thing. Yeah. Where, you know, there's a bit more dopamine because they know they can cash out. Mm -hmm. uh, we would recommend watching Dr. K's content uh, on this, how yep. gaming affects dopamine reward circuitry. I think that's really important. Um, I remember hearing him talk about executive function as well yeah. and how games can have a negative impact on executive function if you don't actually manage them properly. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, he's not some anti-gamer. He runs healthygamer.gg <laughs> for, yep. you know. So we actually do need to think about these things though. Mm -hmm. Because so many things are trying to target us with so many just different methods, you know, that actually do um, really try to just hit the buttons in our brain. Now, when we talk about video games turning to gambling like mechanics, well, hey, have you ever heard of Mr. BF Skinner and the Skinner box, you know? Mm -hmm. um, right, the variable rewards, all of that. Here's a little Skinner box, food dispenser, rats in it. You guys know the picture. You know, yep. you know, you know what it is. We've talked about the Skinner box. Also, the food version is the uh, nice version. It's a lot of the time they use cocaine instead of food. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, even, even just compare, like, the dopamine feeling of a free run of, uh, you know, a Rift in Diablo Immortal versus a fully paid one, right? So there's the free one, okay. Or, sorry, that's the paid one. Even You can just see, like, oh, my God, look how much stuff is coming out of look it. Look at all the oranges, yeah. Yeah, then, all those oranges. Now, of course, people will then get dopamined up on this, and suddenly those oranges won't be good. They will want white because mm -hmm. that indicates a five-star gem. And then mm -hmm. that's the thing they're going to be chasing, which then goes back to, of course our friend to Rolf talking about the, you know, the theoretically near infinite spend wanting a thousand dollar maximum spend, not $500 maximum spend. And that's how these games are, uh, are designed. Yeah, I mean, Here's another one. Is this, um, oh, I forget the name of the, the YouTube channel, uh, exposed. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Just there you go. Want to sit down? Oh, you won three additional spins. But what happens is, you know, they, they see the big reactions. And even though there's a disclaimer at the start of the video, hmm. People will see, you know, the person they're watching make all these big loud noises of excitement here. Mega big win. Uh, you know, $3 <laughs> to $45,000 slot session. Craziest slot win of all time. That's the name of the video. Yeah. Like, what do you think some kid's going to do when they see that? And they see people having the humongous reactions to it. Ultra big win. Now we're at 22 grand. Yeah, it goes up to 43 grand at the end from $3 just because of a massive, massive... Bing, bing, wahoo, don't mean rush, everything is glowing, everything is screaming at you, even the, the you know, the streamer's starting to sh shout and scream, and that's the thing with all this great stuff, and that's why I included the video of the, the jackpot chest from Vampire Survivors there, because that's harmless, right? It, 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 but it's the same fundamental thing, where it just keeps going, it gets shinier and louder and brighter, and anyone who's played Vampire Survivors knows, getting that chest feels fucking fantastic, it feels great, you don't get it all the time? You mostly get once, sometimes you get a three, but when you get a five, you're like, oh, hell yes. Yeah. And that's the same thing that's happening. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing to do. I'm saying that's completely fine. But it is a case of one of them is attached to how do we get you to give us your money? The other is kind of, I have a little bit of fun. And that's a thing where it's the same tactic. So you can see how one person who likes one is substantially more likely to like the other. Especially when they get used to the big dopamine hits of a really good Vampire Survivors run. And it's just not doing it for them anymore, so they turn to gambling. That's maybe a bit of an insane <laughs> comparison. But it's like, you could see how the same underpinning mechanics actually work. I think it's kind of worth understanding that. And knowing that something's actually going, you know... Something could go wrong if you're not kind of careful. I yeah. Yeah, and I mean, you know, Zynga, they were big into hiring data scientists and behavioral scientists to try to actually understand what's really going on here so they can monetize their games better. All of mobile gaming is essentially based on everything we've talked about today. Yeah. Can bleed into MMOs. I mean, you know, the whole 40% chance to get loot after a Mythic Plus dungeon. Yep. That's, uh, it's, yeah, it's <laughs> fundamentally the same thing. It's They could give you every, every five dungeons, get two bits of loot. They could do that. But no, they do 40% chance because that reinforces your behavior better. You enjoy it more, generally, but sometimes you maybe don't enjoy it because it's kind of underpinning your psychology as opposed to working in tandem with it. It's the same way don't mean for don't mean for doing something cool and enjoyable and like meaningful is great. But don't mean from waking up and sinking a can of monsters and you go to bed. Yeah. Maybe not so the same. I think the challenge for game designers, like, we're not saying you can never have dopamine. No, that's at, like no. We are absolutely uh, no, categorically not never. saying that. What we are saying though is it's an interesting problem, and yeah. it's an also it's also an interesting thing to actually have to manage in a game. Because mm. as an example with the Mythic Plus loot, mm. 
eventually the hit won't be as strong for people. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, you could design with Titan Forging a short term, very cool, rewarding Bing Bing Wahoo experience. But then what happens is people get used to it. They get a bit, bit burnt out from it. And then they start to get very frustrated at the system mm -hmm. because it was short term, super strong and had great results, but long term, it was not sustainable. So it's like, how do you actually make a game that's sustainable? in a world where other games are just going to go super hard on the short-term immediate sense of feeling great, well, okay, then those games are going to steal your audience. Will you get them back when they get bored of the other game? Don't know. If I have to fight fire with fire, ultimately. That's, yeah. That's the point. That's so, the point. So, like, I think I really have, like, two kind of points, ultimately, about this. Mm. One is be super careful of gambling because it's the exact same as playing video games in a bunch of ways. It feeds on the same stuff, so I think as an industry, indiv individually and as an industry, we should look at gambling and go, that's not us. That is basically our evil twin, in a sense. Of oh, That's a really fun activity that hooks in a lot of brain chemistry and brain psychology to make it feel really, really, really good. But it has the negativity attached. It has all these problems coming out of it because it relies on real money, as opposed to being a safe, cordoned off version of that. I think the industry as a whole shouldn't be so buddy-buddy with gambling like they are. I mean, I... Th Someone said in the comment, I should have went and searched for it, but someone said there was an interview with a Diablo Immortal developer and they admitted to consulting with people from Vegas oh God. on how to get the MTX any stronger. That's the stuff we should be avoiding. That's the stuff we Wait. should be calling out and shooting straight Wait, out of there. When did that come out? I have no idea. I haven't been able to look for it. But I'm probably looking for it after this. Yeah, wow. Yeah. That's shocking. Yeah. I mean, it's not surprising, but it's yeah. shocking. It's not It's not actually shocking or surprising. It's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. That makes complete sense. And the other point, realistically, is that I think that what, we're do what games are doing by chasing that short term is the equivalent of what the U.S. did putting, well, what everyone did, putting lead in a load of petrol, which is, this is probably bad. But let's not research that this could be bad because we have to make the profit from it now. Yeah, it's how you know. I know it's it's the case in the US. I can only really speak to the UK, but asbestos in yep. all your houses, like, what's this do? Oh yeah, if you breathe it in, you're really likely to get lung cancer. Fuck it, fill the whole fill the whole country with it. Like, but they just didn't know that at the time. They weren't thinking about the long term effects. It's like, I think everyone knows the whole thing about lead and makeup. P women used to run around with lead all over their faces, wondering why they're getting lead poisoning, and that's just a case of people were chasing the short term without thinking of the long-term effects yeah. so i suppose the worry then is like what happens after 10 years you know where is the industry left yep it does it end up being the case that it's hard to do an elden ring it's hard to do a starfield or a skyrim or something because a lot of games are just trying to be way more predatory you know, psychologically predatory. Yeah. yeah yeah so it's an interesting thing and i think we have to think about the long-term implications because ultimately mm. this is a young industry so much of this additional monetization only started in the last 15 years with horse armor. But then the crazy thing is the really deep predatory stuff like that started with mobile hmm. and it's now creeping into more and more places. So it's like we just have to defend what normal is because if we let normal slip, it could really impact the sorts of games that we get and the kind of experiences we have and also people's capability to enjoy experiences. I think a really good example, and it's kind of shocking, but I think this is the case if you see a lot of young people. Um, I'm 28. Like, you know, yeah. we're, we're in our late 20s, so we're not by any means, you know, super old or whatever. Not full we're yet. Basically, in a way, like lots of people our generation or like roughly our age group do use TikTok, but I think that percentage is way higher when you go to people who are like 20. Yeah. And it's like, ask someone for whom the vast majority of their media consumption is TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. Ask them to watch Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> and then that means like, okay, well, how do you get a Lord of the Rings to happen? You don't. Is it simple? You, it is now a substantially more niche product to have something that lasts two and a half, yeah. three hours then, and is a slow burn. What happens is we start to get things that are more like Rise of Skywalker. Another movie yeah. that apparently is very similar to Rise of Skywalker in its like pacing is uh, where, you know, it's like these are less scenes and these are just fucking TikToks mm. back to back um, is the new Jurassic World movie. Oh, that would which, make sense, like, yeah. I think it seems to be getting good audience ratings basically because really? it has so much bing bing wahoo, right? Mm -hmm. It's just there's freaking incomprehensible, meaningless bullshit that looks really expensive happening every three seconds. And that's oh. enough because people have been like eroded to the point where that's just fine, I guess. 
You yeah. look at the movie critics who are the people who are thinking about, well, what is cinema? What story is this trying to tell? What are, you know, what are the themes? What are the deeply impactful character moments? They're all looking at being like, this is completely devoid of any substance. This is yeah. awful. What's happening? Yeah, th- this is two hours of dopamine rushes. There you go. By design, as opposed to this is something that will pl- that will give you a little bit of dopamine, but also you'll come out of it and your share turn to be next time. You'll be all happy. Yeah, so <laughs> I think these are just things to think about and certainly... Yeah. You know, if you're just feeling yourself, feeling a bit funky, being a bit burnt out, not understanding why you're not enjoying gaming or any really yeah. other aspects of your life, I think we would just say uh, Healthy Gamer. Go th- to the Healthy th- Gamer yeah. YouTube channel. Uh, a lot of these streamers, you'll see actual interviews with them yeah. uh, you know, by Dr. K. He's actually been doing stuff on TikTok recently as well, talking, well, th- talking well, about that go. and how there's this like almost anti-TikTok movement on TikTok where they're using the platform to highlight how it feels to actually use TikTok. There's one example that Dr. K was talking about where it was uh, someone's lying in bed and they're just like staring kind of sad and, and kind of annoyed at the camera and it's late at night, but the actual, there's just lights constantly blasting in the room and really loud noises. And it's like, this is how it feels trying to sleep after scrolling TikTok for four hours. Yeah. And he explains very, from his perspective as obviously being actually medically trained and being a psychologist to talk about like, how that physically happens in terms of neurochemical, how, how, what to do about it, how to deal with it. And I think the answer for a lot of people is throw your phone in the river. <laughs> throw your phone in the river and w- go outside and stare at the grass for about six hours a day. That'll sort you out. Yeah. Like, like we're, we're getting, you know, tech uh, ethics people. Yeah. You know, who I, I guess just try to try to warn about things in Google and Twitter or whatever and then yeah. get fired. And this isn't uh, even new. But like we kind of need those people there <laughs> because if you just have... A bunch of coders try to make the number that's being tracked go up then society's going to go in a very bad direction yeah, we really need to think about the means rather than the end here for a second like big tier yeah, yeah. so healthygamer.gg if you want to just ma- i think there's a lot of great resources there yeah, if awesome. any of the downsides here are the sort of thing that maybe you feel like you're feeling like look even if you're playing world of warcraft and you're like why are the mythic plus dungeons not fun anymore and why am i angry at the vault every week <laughs> I actually think Dr. K is going to have the stuff for you. Yep. So that's our final recommendation. Mm. Have a good day. Twitch, get rid of the gambling. <laughs> Man, that ain't cool. Gamba bad. You guys don't want that in your conscience. Nope. Not in the long term. You just don't. Mm. See you next time. <laughs>